Do you know what I like to do when a fellow YouTuber's coming into town? I like to look at some baseball cards. So, I'm going to be with uh, Dave from Legends of the Dugout tomorrow. Uh, he's going to come over and check out my collection with his son. So, I'm looking forward to that. I wanted to pose a question to you guys. And that is, what makes a card special to you? Is it a card that comes with a story? Is it a card that has a lot of nostalgia from your childhood? Is it a card that got a 10? Is it a card that uh, you obtain from somebody uh, for next to nothing that's worth a lot of money? Is it a card that you inherited or that somebody uh, gifted to you? What is What makes a special card for you? like to hear your feedback in the comments. And the reason that I ask this is I was reholdering and going through my 1964 Topps cards and I stumbled on this card and it immediately triggered a memory. I remember it like it was yesterday. Now when I was in the seventh grade we had neighbors and they were really good friends of ours. They used to just pop over for breakfast. You guys, some of you will remember the old days where you could do that. I don't think you could do that anymore. You have to announce announce it. But in the old days, you know, I grew up in the country. And you would just walk over to your neighbors and knock on the door and, and say, Hey, you cooking breakfast? And you'd go and eat or whatever. Go hang out. Those were the good old days. Nobody locked their door. So we had neighbors and uh, they didn't have any children. Uh, so... I was kind of like an adopted son to them, and the guy would take me snowmobile riding and everything. Uh, so when I was in the seventh grade, I remember my mom came over and told me that uh, the woman was pregnant, and uh, when she was going to give birth. And I remember asking my mom, like, how can she know when she's going to give birth, you know? And that was uh, when I learned about C-sections and having... Uh, you could have that arranged uh, for a specific date. And uh, so they had uh, a son, and uh, of course we were very close. Our families were close, and I hung out with them all the time. And when he was little, he used to follow me around, kind of idolized me, and I may have picked on him here and there. Um, which years later, maybe, uh, <clears throat> maybe I was a little hard on him, but I think I toughened him up. He became a good person. And so when he was, uh, when he got to be older, and going through confirmation, because we grew up Catholic, um, he selected me to be his godfather for confirmation. So I refer to him as my godson. And he collected cards, and we always played ball and everything. And uh, so years later, when I was, uh, man, I, I don't know how old I was. It was uh, in the mid uh, early, early 90s. And of course, he was still young. And uh, he and I decided... Uh, because we still lived next to each other at that time. Uh, we were going to go to this card show. And those of you in Pittsburgh might know this. It's right off of Route 30 in Irwin. I think it was uh, it's it, it was at a hotel. I, th I think it's at the um, that intersection where you go to Lincoln Hills Golf Course that used to be there. They're all homes now. They tore that down. But um, it's either there or down the road a little bit near the, the turnpike entrance. But there was a big... A big um, hotel up on a hill not necessarily a big hotel but up on the hill um, on the Lincoln Hills side and they were having a, a card show and so I took them there and it was a real nice venue you know it was like a, um, a conference room you know little little fancier than your average fire hall or a lot of the a lot of the flea markets I would go to uh, you know it actually had carpeting and stuff and I, re I, I remember the show so well, and I remember walking around with him, and I, I, I remember they had a bunch of 1964 stand-ups, and, you know, those cards have always been pricey compared to other cards, and they had Clemente and Mazeroski, you know, being in the Pittsburgh area, and mantles and that kind of thing, and, and they were too pricey for me at the time. And I remember that I got this one card uh, that I stumbled on, and I still remember it was $8.00. And these were the kind of cards that just got my juices flowing. You know, they're sitting there and they're cheap. And Anyway, it's a 1964 Juan shell. So 
So when I see this card, I have a distinctive memory and it just feels like yesterday that I picked this up. I remember walking past the table and, and spotting it. And so uh, this is the kind of thing that makes certain cards special to me. I want to hear your input on it. And while I have you, I wanted to I wanted to talk about something else. And that is, and I always credit Pepino Man Caesar with um, with bringing this to light to me. And I never really thought about it before, even though it makes perfect sense, it's obvious, and I guess I always knew about it in the back of my mind, but never never really made a big deal about it or anything. But that is the fact that unlike modern cards, vintage cards with vintage cards, there is no such thing as doubles. Because every card is unique. Some have a fish eye, and I talk about this all the time. But when I was going through my 1964 Topps cards, I stumbled on two doubles. And uh, they're good examples of it. One is uh, Dave Debouchier, who had his rookie card in 1963, and of course is best known uh, for his time with the Knicks. So I have doubles of this card, and as I was going through it, they have two different color backs. One is kind of pink, and one's orange. So these are not doubles. These are two different cards. And then I stumbled on doubles of Tommy, uh, Tommy McGee, McGraw. I'm drawing a blank there. I stumbled on uh, Tommy McGraw doubles. Same deal. One's pink, one's orange. And you know, even though I've been collecting 1964 Topps cards since I was a little kid going to the flea market, I never noticed that the same card could have different colored bags. I noticed different colored bags, but I never noticed that they could be the same card. It's not something I ever thought about or noticed. So these are not truly doubles. And so now, I can't sell off my doubles or anything because they're two totally different versions. They're two totally different cards. So when you're going through your old vintage cards and you have doubles, check them out. Make sure, if you're getting rid of one, make sure they're different, they're, you know, they're the same. Um, same goes for your 1955 tops, 1956 tops. You know, if I have doubles in the past when I'd sell them, I, I didn't think about. I didn't think about or, or or gave them away. You know, I didn't think about, oh, I better check and make sure one's not a white back and one's a gray back because I'd want to have them both in my set because I'm a bit of a completist. And so if you have doubles, I mean, flip them over, make sure they're not, make sure they're the same color back if you might want to have both the gray and the white backs, for instance. Or in this case, two different versions of this card. Just thought I'd point that out. I'm looking forward to uh, giving a tour tomorrow. My card room, well, I should say rooms, um, my whole upstairs here is lined with cards. And it has been an absolute disaster. Somebody wanted to come over and uh, bring a friend to do a tour. And, and uh, I'm like, we can't even walk through the place. No way. <laughs> so I uh, cleaned it up a bit and uh, have a little more cleaning to do before I get to any more company so that uh, we can actually uh, walk through and I can give give a good tour. And I always joke around, like I'll, I'll set up a fake gift shop and make people exit through there. And I have a little uh, laser pointer and I can point things out when we go through. So I have a lot of fun with it. And I'm looking forward to it because I haven't given anybody a tour in a long time. So I don't know if we'll make a video or not. Um, that'll be secondary. But it's always nice to meet up with other YouTubers, other collectors, and uh, and just hang out. So that's what I have for you. Thanks for hanging out with me, and thanks for watching.